like playing for anime kids. Uh, and I see kids loosely. I call myself a kid. I'm in my forties, which is not a kid. But uh, let's see. I can't talk about music all day. So yeah. With the blue, with the, is that a Starburst me? Oh, that's awesome. Oh, there's these, these three girls that do beanies just like that. They're called Star Friends. Yeah, I have a bunch of Star Friends beanies. Okay. It's creepy. There are posters that are identical to the ones in Silent Hill and Kindergarten Cop. Like, I'm glad you brought that up. Yes. Spooky, spooky. Like, it makes me think that the Silent Hill people are kindergarten cop fans or the other way, or one way or the other. Yeah, <laughs> like the Silent Hill. Yeah. Well, that's, if somebody wrote, this it takes a whole new level of who is your daddy and what does he do? You know, it's like, because it would be pinheaded. I mean, not pinheaded, it would be pyramid at that point. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad you brought that up. Yes, with the pink hat. Somebody knows how to get like, here's something bright and shiny. I will, huh? What's your DJ? I, oh, what, what equipment? Oh, now you're gonna make me tell on my boy. Um, up until last week, I played on a Pioneer CMX 3000. Uh, I used a, a Denon deck that they don't make any, I mean, a Denon mixing board that they don't make anymore, the DNX3. Uh, I used the 3 because it's got trigger kill switches on the high, mids, and lows, so I can, like, do some really fun, tricky stuff. I also have a hard cut switch for the channel, so I can do some choppy stuff. But last weekend, I had to play a show in Minneapolis with Price, a white tea cracker. Uh, my equipment got destroyed by the TSA. Yeah, this really awesome, loving, caring, wonderful people over for the government. They probably couldn't do it dot to dot. Um, but did I say that? Um, they already messed with me, so why do I care? They're going to frisk me when I go through anyway. Um, so we tried to make my gear work. And this is why I say everybody should perform with a nerdcore rapper because. 30 minutes into our show, the equipment died. I mean, the lights went off and everything. And Bryce did not miss a beat, grabbed the mic and just started rapping. And the whole audience went nutty because he raps about video games, hacking, Star Wars. So like, this crowd, yeah, like totally. And I got video of it. It's hysterical because while he's rapping, he's setting up a track on his, on his laptop to throw out just in case we can't get the gear working. So, um, and those of you that know gear will kind of freak out when you hear. Uh, so during the show, while I was playing, he walked off on the phone. I can't believe I'm telling this story to a whole bunch of people, because I was going to keep this on the DL, but you asked. Uh, it just shows what a cool guy he is, honestly. Uh, he comes back and he goes, hey, we were talking about the CDJ1s and the CDJ2s. Why did you like the 2s so much? And I was like, oh, CDJ2000s have the record, the needle drop thing on the wave file, and uh, you can link them together. Then he goes, oh, okay, right, and he walks off. And he's on the phone, and he comes back a song later, and he goes, yo, man, I need your shipping address. And I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, I need your shipping address. I was like, seriously, dude, you can't do this. He's like, I already did, money's already spent. And I was like, what are you doing? He goes, give me your shipping address. So uh, it wasn't, it ended up there was a mistake made in the order. It wasn't two CDJ 2000s. I'm ending up on the CDJ 850s, the new 850s with the uh, flash drive, but my new board is going to be, I'm always getting a nerd as I'm saying it, a, DJ, a DJM 2000. The board like this, it has the touch sensitive screen in the middle, yeah. Super, super excited. Uh, so the next time you see me playing, I'll have a really big, right, I'm going from a footprint that's this big to like this big, so uh, I'm going to have to build some stands or something for my new gear, but yeah, that's what an awesome guy he is. I, I called the gangster with a heart of gold last weekend because that's who he is. Uh, look, <laughs> he's like, I love this. This is like contest. You can do those distracting hand, yeah. Oh my god, I would be the biggest ass in the world if I said no. <laughs> yeah, dude, um, find me after this and give me your name and I'll write you on Facebook. Uh, I my Facebook's almost full, but I troll conservatives on my Facebook. <laughs> That's right, that's right. So yeah, dude, I'll, uh, cause what I'm doing, I'm also knocking off a bunch of non-people, cause there's 
a bunch of like RP journals, and there's the Anime Boston Bucket. Anime Boston Bucket, you were awesome, but it's time we step right away. You don't post very often. So, um, so I'm, I'm also removing non-people, so I'll friends you that. Uh, right here, just come in the stairs after that. Yeah, totally. Oh my god, you have a squishable. Are you kidding me? I have four squishables. That's awesome, yes. Uh, okay, so um, I'm about to do it again. It's not a color, it's a style. I'm about to leopard spot my hair again. Uh, it's super, it's like it's got super long, and being a DJ, like at the end of the show, it's like all stuck to my face. And so uh, I reboot my hair like about once a year. Just you know, shave it all off. So what you do is you shave it down on one setting, and then you bleach it, but you, and this is the only time you'll ever try to get this color. You know that awful yellow color when you're trying to get blonde and it doesn't want to go all the way? Uh, check out the plug suits. Awesome, very nice, really cool. We were just talking about the a minute ago. Uh, uh, that weird yellow color, that like tacky, kind of pale yellow, and then you use black hair dye, and you have someone paint on the leopard spots, and as it grows out, it starts to look just uh, super dope. So uh, that's next. And then the cool thing is when it starts to grow a little bit more, you take like blue and you do light blue in it, so you have blue never spotted hair. And one of my one of my DJ like not idols. I think he went, it wasn't that he was so good. He just always put on really good shows. Man, I got cramped in my legs. So it's like I'm dancing. I'm trying to keep my legs from cramping. Uh, DJ Kiyoki used to do his hair like that. I think it looks so cool. So yes, you you've had your hands on like two, three different times. Yes. Hi. Oh, so until like the ending for any show in the panel. He used to say it's very serious. <laughs> I love Sunahara, period. Uh, Sunahara, that's one of my... I love playing that silly character because he's so needed anytime there's anything serious on screen. The what? I'm sorry, I'm super distracted. Oh, nice, nice. Let's see remix. Oh, um, here's a neat story that I don't ever tell. Uh, so, uh, I knew that Funimation had the rights to Beck uh, for about a year before they even auditioned. I met uh, Osamu Kobayashi, which is the director, the Japanese director of Beck. And uh, we, got, we got to talk a little bit at uh, Anime Expo, and I told him, he asked me had I seen his show, and I said, no, I don't watch anything illegally. And it went back to the translator, and he was like, like I smile, like, that's good, and I, and I go, but I really like the dog. Because I had seen, they did a, we did a little screening, a like, little preview while his panel was going on. And so, uh, later in the conversation, I said, I think I work for the company that has the rights to the show. And he looked at me and just kind of like, yeah, you do. <laughs> you know who has the rights to this. And when we said goodbye, <clears throat> he told the interpreter to tell me something. The interpreter kind of laughed and he said, uh, Ms. Kobayashi said that you have to audition for Beck if given a chance, but you cannot play the dog. And I was like, and I got to go, why can't I play the dog? And I didn't realize I was in a Ramon shirt and like tore jeans. Funimation knew that, and there was this joke forever that I really, I was already cast the minute he did that. They're like, oh, well, the Japanese want that. We have to do it. But they didn't tell me that. They let me sweat that audition, and they're like, oh yeah, well, Chris Patton had a really good audition. I'm like, oh, dude, he's totally wrong for that part. Like, I was just sweating it so bad. Um, and the deciding factor on who played Maho was decided on my voice. They had, it was between Laura Bailey and Brina Valencia. And it was whose voice blended best with mine, and so that we we sing in the water together. And the weird thing is, mine and Brina's voice actually hit the same tone several times during that song, and they stretched the aisle because it made this weird sound, like the same. 
note. So they're like, we kept listening. It sounded like noise in the take, and it's because y'all's voices line up almost perfectly. So, but that's the reason Brina played Maho. It's so cool because that is like of all Brina Palencia's roles, that is the most like her. She really is like, yo, she's like, she's like one of the boys. So, uh, but hot. You, ladies and gentlemen, you can see Brina Palencia. All you have to do is go into a GameStop. She's like a voice of GameStop, and now they have a video with her in it. So, but yeah. So you see more than enough Brina Palencia, right? Uh, it's tough. Like, it's really hard. Uh, of course, somebody in here wants me to say one of the Hitachi twins, but that's just not it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I always break it down to three, uh, and there will be a fourth. What is that noise? Oh, is somebody hissing me? Uh, don't hiss me. We're not in San Francisco. Are you going to click your fingers, too? Come on. Nobody's hissing me. Um, that's so weird. Uh, they do that in California, it's so weird. Um, but uh, San Francisco, yeah, they'll really, they'll hiss you. Yeah, super weird, super weird. I'm just like, get in your high room, leave me alone. Uh, did I say that? Um, I, I watch too much South Park, by the way. Um, uh, but yeah, this, it really is no such thing. It's funny to see how far they've come. Like their old writing was just like whatever, and then they're like, Mormon episode, oh my god, it's so brilliantly funny, they're a little musical. Um, and the musical, the Book of Mormon musical is the most riotously funny thing I've ever heard of. Yeah. Totally not family friendly though, it's totally offensive. I actually got her autograph last year. Um, uh, Power Mikisa and Evangelion, because uh, as an anime fan, there's nothing cooler than standing and looking at Evangelion like the vibe, it's pretty cool. Um, now there's four already. It's Chrono and Chrono Crusade for the same reason. I met the manga Kahir in Anime Boston uh, in 2005, I think. Uh, we were still working on the show, and that made recording the end of the show totally different for me because I knew the creator and I knew what he intended, and uh, he forever changed the way I feel about manga versus anime because he actually wrote both endings to the show. He wrote the manga one way, and then when they did the, the animated series, he said, well, they should be different so you have a reason to do both, which I thought was really cool. Most people are like, ah, hey, 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 He's not little anymore, he's like a grown man and he's in a rock band now, but uh, there's this kid that I know through anime conventions and I've known him since he was 12 years old and he's just like Koyuki, he had to teach himself to play the guitar and uh, he really didn't have a lot of support in his music, family didn't believe in him, it was like myself and his grandma were the two people that like, keep doing, keep playing music. And now uh, there's a video, in fact you can find it, if you look on YouTube, it's uh, Greg and Sam Slip Out. He got up on stage and played Slip Out with the band, and I sang Slip Out and he played guitar, it was pretty cool. Um, so those shows, and this new show that I just finished that I cannot talk about, but here's the hint, is extremely violent. Uh, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. It's not like dance, the violence actually works itself in the story, but it's very violent. It's probably the most violent thing I've ever seen. Um, I have a feeling that that will also be a favorite because of the stretch in the character from wimpy to hefty. Hefty, uh, I can't, hefty, 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 wimpy, 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 wimpy,
And in fact, when we announced the cast, it was really funny. We had been finished, we had finished recording that show like three months before that cast announcement was made. So it was so funny because people on the internet were like, I hope you enjoy playing the Keep Talking Twins. And I'm like, we, we did it, we finished, it's over. Uh, we announce things usually, that's like this show I can't talk about. Like, we're not gonna announce it until August, and I finished it a month or two ago. So like, long stretch. Um, the fun thing, who is talking? I'm not Evan. Um, the funny thing is, Lucy, Christian, and I would drive back and forth, because we live in Houston, we used to, I live on an island now, but I used to live in Houston, so it's a five hour drive to work, and we'd go up and record for a few days, and I would always get these calls from Lucy, and like, do you even know what that episode was about? Because she like, she plays Honey Shin Pie, so Honey speaks less than most people, so she'd really not know what things were. That being said, because the recording process was so confusing and so fast, and the other thing is Todd Haberborn and I, uh, man, you like to participate. Um, uh, Todd Haberborn and I had this ongoing battle because whoever recorded first was the person that decided how a line would be set. Well, like, you probably say, hey, what's up, differently than the way I say, hey, what's up. It's just a difference in our personality. Being forced to take on someone's nuances in their voice is frustrating. So Todd and I were always racing to see who could get in first so that that person would set the tone of that piece. Um, all that being said, and all the frustration aside, it's the reason I enjoy watching Oran more than I do most shows, because it was new, it was fresh. We recorded it so fast that I didn't really know what was going on, so I could enjoy watching it. Like, that's why they're eating bananas. Like, you know, like, like so many things make sense in the context of the whole show. And uh, so I love Oran. In fact, it was the first, uh, second, sorry, Sam Seven was the first. It was the second anime Blu-ray I owned. Uh, now I've got a bunch, but uh, I've got to get Redline this week. I've got to get the Redline Blu-ray. I've heard it's just crazy good. So uh, I heard the soundtrack's really good too. Yes, Shaving Hat. <laughs> <laughs> How do I say this? Uh, I love Initial D uh, for one reason. Shows that are marketed towards girls look like it, and shows that are marketed towards boys look like it. I talk about this in the Yowie panel. Uh, I have this panel called What Does Yowie Have to Do With That? It's not really a dirty Yowie panel, it's kind of a funny Yowie panel. Uh, but I said, you know, in Sayuki, which the main fan base is a lot of girls, those boys are gorgeous, and they have like, you know, little key eyes, and and in Initial D, the people look like Frankenstein, and the cars are gorgeous. So like, <laughs> the thing, like the people look weird. Penta's got like a square face, but like then you see the cars and they're just like, like my same friend, the kid that plays guitar, he was like, when he found out I was working on Initial D, he goes, you know, my first car purchase was based on that show. So uh, I love, and again, it's, just, it's the kind of sports thing that I'm not into, so it was really cool to be the kid that knew, like he was a terrain expert. He knew like when it was raining, how fast they had to take a curve and stuff like that. So I, I enjoy that. It's also cool because I saw the original dub of Initial D and I was glad to be a part, like much like One Piece, I was glad to be a part of a solution to that. So yeah. yeah you look like you had a second part to that. You know? Oh, dude, I, I know the guys in Move. Like, how can I hate the music in Initial D? In fact, um, the guy, um, uh, I'm black out on his name. The dude from Move. Um, no. What? Who said what? Muncie, thank you. Muncie came on stage during one of my raves, and people were taking pictures of him. And like, this proves that it's not usually the J-Rock band; it's usually their management. They start like management came on and started yelling at me, and then my hockey temper was like, ah, like blew up at management. Like it was just back and forth. I'm like, oh, he can't talk to him. that's that's uh, what's the hey, that's the representative from Avex. And I'm like, that's one of our actors. You can't talk to him like that. So it was really funny. Like, ah. well, they told him that he couldn't be on stage because people weren't allowed to take pictures of his face. So. In a move that makes him a super classy guy, he went to his room and cut up a t-shirt and came back in a luchadori mask that he made. And, then he was like, oh. and it was the coolest thing. There's a picture of Luxu and I, and he's got this t-shirt mask over his face, and I'm like, like, like a gun. So yeah, I love the music, all that music, because it's that real high-intensity Eurobeat music that it's not always great to dance to, but it's really like great to drive to, and like other things. So yeah, I love the music in initial D.
<laughs> yes, do your dance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, do your dance. Bob? Oh. Oh. Way to go, commoner. Now I'm going to have to do this all day. <laughs> That's just kind of my real voice. It's just pushed up into my nose. Yeah. Please know, will you say this line for me? Yes, waving. That's good. Hi. Oh, okay. rocking a hardcore mullet. Um, I like little Goku. I like sweet, like hungry Goku. Uh, he's, he's the funnier of the two of them. Uh -oh. But what show? What show? Oh yeah, yeah. I've got a funny story about people that recognize just the boys. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. I love that character too. Yep. Die. Die. But but my character, what's it what's his name? Will? I think it's Will in Salty Red. Yeah. When you meet Will, you know he's gonna die because the first thing you see is his hands hit the sink and he's throwing up blood. He's dying of consumption. Um, the cool thing about Will though is he after he dies, it's this little boy, and this doesn't ruin anything because it's just an episode type character. Yeah, it's, yeah, it really is a filler episode. Uh, he's a little boy that dreams of building this plane that flies out of junk. He's building it out of scrap metal and whatever. And you find out that he's dying. Well, Salty is actually in a plane with him when he finally gets up in the air. And the minute that it gets up in the air, you see her and her blood come back and go past her. And he, like, as soon as he gets the plane in the air, he dies and he crashes. Yeah, I know. But Salty decides to rebuild the plane, and it's her wish to get the plane back up in the air. And when she does, Will appears on the wing as a ghost and like has this really cool conversation with her. Um, I love, 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 love characters like that. There's a certain actor that I work with that thinks you always have to have a lead. And you know, that's cheesy. The lead is not even, usually not even the most interesting character, honestly. The lead is like the, oh, I fight for what is good, and blah, you know, like, it's the filler characters, and a little, like my little character in Alchemist. Who else can say they play a wizard? You know, I play this 75 foot baby in those who hunt elves, and that's, at the end of the day, that's funny to play a little baby, you know, like, a, well, not a little baby, a giant baby. Uh, in in uh, Nurse Witch the Movie Time, I play like the Mona Cat, the Aspie Cat, I play a computer virus, I play toilet paper, a kudos lackey, yeah, all those roles. There's in fact a show that has a lot of good roles for young guys, a uh, controversial show called Dancing the Vampire Bun. Uh, I'm one of the few actors that put my name on it because I'm like, it's a story, nobody got hurt. I don't remember any cartoon character having to go to a hospital, um, ever, because they're not real. Um, <laughs> But it's a story about a 5,000 year old vampire that takes control over a 9 year old girl's body. And that's where the controversy, as you can imagine, starts. To me, that's a 5,000 year old person cosplaying as a 9 year old, so it's really not. Because it isn't. The little girl's gone when the vampire gets her. She's out. Uh, but I was allowed to audition for any role I wanted in the show. But the director, who's finally started taking credit for it, Ian Sinclair, which uh, he's the director of Black Butler, uh, a lot of people didn't want their name on it. Now that he's seen how much fans love the show, he's like, well, I, I directed that. Please, uh, he'll be mad. He's like, okay, put it on YouTube, though. Um, no, he's taking credit for it. Uh, he said, when we were doing auditions, he goes, well, who do you want to audition for? I was like, well, who do you want me to audition for? He goes, can I just tell you about this one character? And I was like, okay. And he tells me about this little character that's totally inconsequential to the story. Um, but hey, Steven. Uh, but he's a little wimpy character that's always getting beat up and basically gets turned into a vampire. And then the next time you see him, he's just wrecking people. He's throwing people in the air and flipping out. Because that's what happens to kids that get bullied. By the way, tomorrow I'm doing a Get Better panel at noon. Please come if you want. Uh, but he doesn't realize there's even a pecking order to vampires and flips out and one of the vampires grabs him by his head and throws his face into the desk and he breaks his feeder thing. And that scream from that violent to the, uh, like the little baby, like, oh my god, he just broke my tooth. Uh, 
And then the next time you see him, he's basically a suicide bomber. He has this wonderful dialogue about people are horrible and that they always pray on the weak and blah, 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 blah. And then he just kills himself. And it's the most gut-wrenching, horrible, like, oh my god, please don't let that kid hurt himself. Um, but it's a character that everyone remembers. Like, oh, you that little kid on the train. Like, uh, and then I didn't want to read for any other character after that. I was like, yeah, the little wimpy kid. Yeah, that's the one. I want to play that kid. Um, and so, like, when we announced it, I said, uh, there was written on my arm, it said, he goes 6-9, because you meet him in episode 6, and by episode 9, there's no Hiko. But, uh, but again, that's not a spoiler, that's a kid, like Proto Crusade, when I first started watching Proto Crusade, I was like, this show cannot possibly go anywhere good, like, something bad is gonna happen in this show. So, uh, much like that, because that's how I feel about that character. But I love little small characters. Thanks for bringing up Will, though, I love that character. Uh, it's just a great, great, great character. Uh, yes, pointing, you, who is it? You, is it you? Is it two colors? Awesome, yes. Yeah, you should put your hand down. Yes, pointing at yourself. Yes, yes. Yes, with a cute hair color. My favorite line ever, I, it's on YouTube actually. Um, episode 23 of Sayuki, uh, we send Gojo out, mistake number one, to get food, and he gets, of course, distracted by friend Brian's dude. My friend, hey, hey, he's like a dude. Hey, what's up? Um, he gets distracted by Shock of Shocks, a woman, and uh, and he she's actually this bee, bee lady that tries to sting him and kill him, and the Sanzo party has to rescue him. Well, everybody has these like heroic lines, like Sanzo is like, you bit not more than you can chew. And then you see uh, Akai, he's like, I don't think you want to do that. Well, as Goku's always hungry, and he was going to buy off food for food, you see Goku, he's like, doing that thing where he always says, which one he said, he scratches his head, and he just says, Where's my dinner, you slut? And that's my And the first time I heard it, I was watching a DVD player on a plane with headphones, and Monica was in the front, Monica Real was in the front of the plane, and I was in the back, and she said it was the most knee-jerk, like, whoa! She said it was, like, totally silent, and then from the back of the plane, you hear me go, I knew you were watching something. I didn't know whether it was South Park or no. I go, no, it's Sayuki. Um, but that's my favorite line ever, definitely. Uh, holding that cute thing in the air. What is that? Oh, I, oh my gosh, really? That's awesome. Where did you find that? <coughs> that's from the Doctor Who thing. Oh my gosh, my, don't let my brother see that. He will take it. Seriously, my brother will take that. He's the biggest Doctor Who tourist with band on earth. Mine's Misfits. I'm a big Misfits fan. That's what happens when you give Chaz superpowers. I love it. Ghost Stories has been... Ghost Stories is the most fun I have ever had recording anything. Well, here's what we're trying. I'm trying to convince Ian Foster that we need to redub if not the whole thing, just the first five episodes every five years. Because, and those of y'all that don't know what Ghost Stories was, Ghost Stories was this uh, horrible show uh, called Ghost Stories in High School that bombed in Japan, uh, that Anaplex couldn't sell to anybody. And after trying, 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 three minutes, wow, it was super fast speed run. Um, they gave it to, they sold it for a song and a dance, and we were allowed to do anything we wanted with it. And we did. <laughs> and, uh, and so here's the thing, like when we did this show before, we didn't have a lot of the people that we would have to make fun of now. Like we didn't have Sarah Palin, Lindsay Lohan, nobody knew Tom Cruise was crazy. I played a little Jewish kid, Mel Gibson's mine. Like, I'll get that guy. So even if we do it as like a fan thank you, because nobody expected that show to sell or do well, and it beat Full Metal Alchemist for double the year that year. So that's the little show that put it in. Uh, so keep your fingers crossed, and if you see an online petition for more ghost stories, sign it. So uh, one last question that's got to be super fast. Who's got? Uh, so you're waving something frantically. Yes. Oh. Okay. Quick. Oh my God. Um. That's the coolest question ever. Um. There's a song by Saves the Day uh, called This Is Not an Exit. Uh, and it's basically, um, what, uh, I can't even, I couldn't even, because the whole song is beautiful. Uh, and it's a person that's a performer, the last,
set of lyrics. Um, he talks about spotlighting you on this on the stage, and like as your curtain falls, you know you did it all, the best that you knew how, and and you can hear them cheering now. So let us smile out, show your teeth, because you know you did it well. It's a really it's a good song about not looking behind you and just forging forward. So uh, this is not an exit of my stage today. Uh, I will see you guys on the dance floor at the rave tonight. I, you got to come up here. Uh, and I will see y'all at noon, but it gets better panels. It's better. It gets better panels tomorrow. Thank you guys for being here. Hello? Kyle! Kyle!